All right, now we got The Way I Am versus Rock Bottom. Okay. How is this in the first round? This is like- These are tough matchups. This could be like Elite Eight. What's up, you're watching Hive Mind, the slimmest show on the internet. My name is Riley Zosner, but my shady co-host, Graydon. Mind your own business, man. And today we're deciding once and for all what the best Eminem song is. This is our Eminem Song Bracket. 64 Eminem songs, only one song can win. Drop your favorite Eminem song down in the comments right now. Before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more, HiveMindTV.com for our merch. We also have a drop over on Cope's website. It's on the screen, it's linked in description, along with our Patreon and our Cameo if you'd like to support us, or click the Join button here on YouTube, become a member. Thank you to all the members. Also, if this video gets 15,000 likes, we will do whatever bracket idea is the most liked comment. So comment an artist you'd like to see us do a bracket of, and the most liked comment, if this video gets 15,000 likes, we'll do it. Yes. And last thing before we get into the bracket, today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, Fume. Fume. We'll tell you more about them later in the video. Thank you, Fume. As always, first round, we're gonna hear a clip of the songs. After that, we just play it out. Come on. All right, first matchup. Lose Yourself versus Nat. Oh, starting off with a hard one. Lose yourself in the music, the moment you own it, you better never let it go. Oh, you only get one shot. The bartender to me after a couple. You, you only, only get one shot. I've seen you in here before, buddy. <laughs> you only get one shot. I know who you are after two. <laughs> These bars are like COVID. Are like COVID. You get them right off the bat. 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 Amazing song. Amazing display of lyricism. <laughs> um, pretty much everything we love Eminem for is on display right there in Nat. Famous for its lyrical lemonade video. Mm -hmm. It's also produced by DA Got That Dope. Yeah. Which is just so weird yeah. to hear Eminem on. But, oh, God, the COVID bars. All already have aged like milk. Oh God, <laughs> sour. We'll get into it more broadly, but like new Eminem. Tough pill to swallow. Tough pill to swallow. And he's done swallowing pills, so lose, lose yourself. Your, yeah, okay. <laughs> Next we've got Lucky You versus Say What You Say. Okay. Another new versus old matchup. I think the new's gonna get wheedled out quick. <laughs> I'll be surprised if anything post 2010 makes it to the third round. I'll be very surprised, yeah. <laughs> Another trope of the new Eminem is his bitter, out of touch, hating on the new generation thing. Yeah. He doesn't do it the same way other old school lyrical rappers do it either. He no. has like this certain fire to it that worked to his benefit in his early career. Mm -hmm. And I feel like now works against him where it comes off even more corny and bitter. Today, we're writing songs about nothing. In my day, I wrote about killing people. <laughs> <laughs> I always just read it as like, Eminem spent way too much time reading the reviews of his last three albums. Yeah. Like that's really all that it is is he just sees like everybody hating on him and then he's like how do you guys like this instead of me. Right. And that bitterness used to be spun into this like weird satire that now is just old man sitting in the suburbs going look how fast I can rap. These guys can't rap like that. Why do you like them? And it's like directly about the rap game. When he was younger it was like pop culture at large was what he criticized and like was satirical about and was like playing with the idea of him being a pop figure and how that was funny and now he He's like, I'm the rapper. And yeah. he's criticizing other rappers like almost exclusively. It was interesting the way he was doing it then because he was a part of it. Now he's not a part of it. Yeah. And that is always going to be seen as cornier is just sit back with your arms crossed and be like, look at all this crap. Yeah. He was at award shows sitting next to Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake making fun of them. Yeah. But now he's not sitting next to Lil Xan and Lil Pump somewhere. No, he's not their peers. What you say is what you say. Say what you say. How you stay whenever you stay in it Just remember how you Just way cooler Oh, it's, so much cooler <laughs> It's way cooler He's like singing He's got that voice He's not trying to And humble mumba jumba No, his hooks His hooks back in the day Are just fire Yeah like, He just knew what he was doing Dre's all over this one too Yeah I'm gonna say something controversial I'm gonna say Dr. Dre and Eminem Are better than Joyner Lucas and Eminem And I'm gonna leave it at that <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yep. I'm not touching that. <laughs> Light me up. I'm not touching that. My Instagram will be at the end of the video. Go there. Send the hate mail there. Say what you say. Absolutely. All right, now we got the monster versus Deja Vu. Because I'm friends with the monster. I loved when they link up. I don't think Rihanna and Eminem ever should have made music together. <laughs> I'm not joking. I like when they link up. I think Eminem and Nate Dogg are the only people who should do hooks for Eminem. <laughs> hey, love the way you lie. It's on my sex playlist. Is it really? Absolutely, buddy. <laughs> do you know what that song's about? It's one of the only four songs, too. There's only four songs on it? Uh-huh. We'll get into the other three later. All right, spoiler alert. One of them's Freak on a Leash. <laughs> Sometimes I feel so alone. I just don't know. Feels like I've been down. 
I don't know. It feels like Western in a way. It almost yeah. has like a draw to it. And then you have the samurai sword sound. <laughs> there are weird things about it yeah. that I do enjoy. This is not an easy one for me. This is like a toss up for me. I don't really care. I feel like the monster might be like a better song overall. That's what I'm going to say is like Rihanna singing a hook better than Eminem doing that voice. Probably, yeah. <laughs> now we got Kill Shot versus Business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Grant. Grant loves Kill Shot. You look up to me and for the record, you would suck a dick to fucking be me for a second. Like a boss like to get on my channel. How are you gonna name yourself after a damn gun and have a man bun? <laughs> and when he says, I'd rather be 80 year old me than 20 year old you. Yeah. I mean, he won that beef, but he didn't make himself any more likable. It's out of pocket in a lot of ways, and it does feel crazier than MGK could have ever taken it, but it's not an enjoyable song to listen to. I'm not like, oh man, I'm turning up. Kill shot. <laughs> it's like if a retired NBA legend beat like a high school star in one on one. <laughs> yeah. It's not impressive. No. And you also kind of look like an asshole yeah. in a certain way. MGK is not likable either, but Eminem just like showed the sides of why people don't really rock with him anymore. I don't know. It was kind of a lose lose. We all really lost because it made MGK make the music he makes now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Which is a net negative on society. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take that a hundred days out of a hundred days over Kill Shot. It's fire too. It's a fun song. Yeah. It's got the sirens, the kind of old G Funk beat, yeah. classic Eminem hook too. Let's get down to business. Business, easy. Yeah. I'm done talking about Kill Shot. Quit asking me who won the beef. You guys are <laughs> annoying. All right, now we got 97 Bonnie and Clyde versus Bitch Please 2. Okay. Our first tough matchup. Yeah, the old ones. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. And when we ride. I know. Controversial song. I love it though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy ass story. Yeah, it's awesome. The sound effects in it are insane. Mm -hmm. Like it starts with like a dragging and then you like hear the splash like into the river. <laughs> like it's just, and he's like talking to <laughs> Haley. Yeah, like, the baby <laughs> talk is my favorite. Say bye bye mama. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tell, go 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 go. <laughs> tell mommy you love her. Yeah. <laughs> like, in the interpolation of just the two of us mm -hmm. too, which was written by Grover Washington Jr. Let out a lot of people know that. Saw some trouble everywhere that I go. This one's crazy though. Yeah, I mean, this is just full on G Funk. It's Nate Dogg, right. Snoop Dogg exhibit. You got the whole crew on there. I don't know, Bitch Please 2 is just like a better song, but conceptually, I really appreciate that era of Eminem that made 97 Bonnie and Clyde, and I love the controversy around it, but I'm gonna listen to Bitch Please 2 more. That's fair. I like 97 Bonnie and Clyde more. It's just more Eminem in character, world building. I feel like Bitch Please 2 doesn't even like really feel like a lot of Eminem DNA in there. And 97 Bonnie and Clyde is like not a single other person on earth can make that song. I'm going Bitch Please 2, our first tiebreaker. Grant, what's your opinion? I will take Bitch Please 2. Kind of an upset there. I didn't see myself voting against any Slim Shady in the first round, but here we are. All right, now we got Just Lose It versus My Mom. <laughs> it, interesting. <laughs> All right, now lose it. <laughs> Just lose it. <laughs> Go crazy. <laughs> The Pee Wee Herman impression. I love that hook. I like that song a lot. Oh, it's insane. It's so fun. That's not a jab at Michael. <laughs> it's crazy. And like, who the fuck does a Pee Wee Herman impression? M. That's yeah. like perfect impression for him to do. He's yeah. a maniac. You thought it was a sample too. That's yeah, how good, good he is at yeah. that impression. My mom loved Valium and lots of drugs. That song has a lot of crazy narrative too. Yeah, just the energy of Just Lose It is like, that's always gonna like get me excited. I had to like pull back some layers to even get into my mom. <laughs> I had to pull back some layers to get into my mom. Yeah, I just- The song. No, I get it. It's just the <laughs> content, like, yeah. We're talking about Eminem's music here. If you remove context, it still is like, you know. We're not though. No one's gonna clip that and post it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's Just Lose It, but it's kind of close. Like uh, my mom has grown on me in preparing for this bracket. That is like a cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, that song's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now we got The Way I Am versus Rock Bottom. Okay. How is this in the first round? This is like- These are tough matchups. This could be like Elite Eight. Yeah. Oh God, this is crazy. I am whatever you say I am. If I want it, then why would I say I am? A lot of people say he invented the yeet gong there. <laughs> they, gong. A lot of people have said that. Yeah. yeah. From one white rapper to another. From your lips to God's tits. That's one of my favorites ever. But that 
That's one of my favorites. These are both, no joke, top 10 Eminem songs for me. Like, this is a really tough one. Rock Bottoms is cool to me because it still has, like, a lot of those old school tendencies. Yeah. You can, like, see his early influences still there. It has those, like, back and forth cadences. It has that early Dre production and that young, squeakier Eminem voice that I kind of favor. Yeah, he was doing, like, a cool G-rap thing. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. That's Rock Bottom. I mean, damn it. It's like a little call and response. But I just, the way I am, I, I don't know. I, I have to go with the way I am. I'm going rock bottom grant i'm also taking rock bottom g yeah. baby's on my side for life i paid him for this video well i he's told me before that's one of his favorite eminem songs so i knew yeah. i wasn't gonna win this battle but yeah. the way i am leaving first round is like actually messed up you want me to kiss your hand no it's okay. i'm not going to now we got without me versus no love okay <sighs> finally we can breathe loosen up a bit so everybody just follow me because we need a little controversy I have like childhood memories of that. This is like one of my favorite rap hits of all time. Yeah. This song is so crazy. Unbelievable video, unbelievable song. Really encapsulates a lot about Eminem. He just was so self-aware. It makes you wonder, where did that go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that the one too where he says, uh, fuck you, Dad? Yeah. yeah. That's his mom. Yeah. He's just saying, fuck you. <laughs> and because his mom sued him for $100 million yeah. for defamation and then lost and got $1,600 out of it. And like in the midst of the whole lawsuit, also recorded her own rap song. It's and good too. Is it? This sample with Wayne on it is like, I, I admire it. Yeah. For like, this is the one I'm gonna bring Wayne in for, yep. is like hilarious to me. This song feels like a freakish roadside attraction. Come and see the cow with no fur and like four eyes. You're like, <laughs> oh! Yeah, like early Eminem feels like timeless in a certain way. This is frozen in its era. Like yep. you can feel when this song came out. <laughs> Bad. Yeah, it's without me. Yes. Great, before we get to the next matchup, do you wanna tell them about our sponsor, Fume? I sure do. Cold turkey might be great on sandwiches but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about hypnotherapy or magic crystals. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume. And they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers something to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while you're breaking your bad habit. The first time I tried Fume, I'll admit, I was skeptical, but it's way more flavorful than I expected, and it feels very fresh. Not to mention how good it just feels in your hand. It's so well-weighted, it's perfectly balanced, and extremely fun to fidget with. Give it to me, let me fidget with it. Go ahead, man, fidget away. Boom. <laughs> Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code HIVEMIND to save 10% when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code HIVEMIND to save an additional 10% off your order today. today. Head to tryfume.com slash hivemind to save an additional 10% off your order today. Thank you, Fume, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. And we're back. Let's get into it. Come on. All right, now we got Stan versus Venom. Ooh, tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Venom and Venom. <laughs> Shout out to Dido, man. Shout out my dad was into Dido before this song. Yeah, nice. Shout out. My oh, dad, sorry, shout yeah. him out. Shout out to Graydon's dad for being into Dido before this song came out. <laughs> my dad's a gatekeeping king. He was a hipster for Dido. Everybody knows what this this whole this story. I mean, you know. It's one of the best songs. A tight narrative, an unbelievable atmosphere, and now it's like a word. Yeah, this coined the term stan. So everybody out there who's like, I'm a Charlie XCX stan, you are directly making an Eminem reference, which is hilarious and to me. Yeah, they will be forever. <laughs> And I can't explain it, and I'm not really going to try and justify it, but just by going back and listening, I learned to like this song. <laughs> it's the only song off Kamikaze that, like, when it came up, I was like, oh, here we go. He's going to do the... 
There's just something that infected me. It poisoned me. Yeah, totally. And I couldn't suck it out. Well, that's you. And I know, uh, I know. Be you, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to be. But I just want to admit the weird things that happened to me along the way. I wish I never heard this song. Wish it never <laughs> entered my ears. Made me like Eminem significantly less. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it's Stan. Correct. Okay, cool. You don't like it that much, right? No, <laughs> no, not enough to fight, no. But it just, it had a weird effect on me. It's like when you had to watch Golden Girls when you were homesick with your grandma, when you were like eight, and all of a sudden you were like nine, and you were like, you know what? I could go for some Golden Girls right now. Yeah. All right, we got Cinderella Man versus is shake that. Ooh. What's his name? Cinderella man. Cinderella man. <laughs> this might be the worst song in this bracket. I hate this song so much. Cinderella man. <laughs> Just the way that his song is like, what the fuck? What was he doing on this album? You know I don't I mean? know, man. Oh, girl, shake that ass for me. Shake that ass for me. Come on, girls. I mean, that's one of the best Nate Dogg hooks of all time. If this was not an Eminem song, this would be a song that you and like our friend Huntley yep. would play at a party and you guys would be going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I you wish know? they had a version without him. <laughs> but it'd be so empty without him. <laughs> this song, it, it's pretty good. It's not yeah. like my favorite song on here by any means, but Shake That's pretty good. Cinderella Man is like, I wish I had covered my ears when that song came out. It's a dead cat on the table. Can't stop looking at it and you're mad that it's even there. <laughs> All right, now we got Berserk versus If I Had. This is kind of a tough matchup. I feel like we have some hot takes about this matchup. Probably disagree too. I mean, all I can picture is just Rick Rubin just like that in the music video. Kendrick's in that music video. It's got like the data moshing uh -huh. shot in Detroit. I mean, this was like Eminem is back, but he was doing some like Beastie Boys 80s rap shit. I love that song, Stroke Me. Stroke me, stroke me. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's in Billy Madison. That's where I know it from. Sure. I don't know. This one, like, going in, I was like, well, that's, like, the example of the Eminem stuff that I hate. And then the more I listen to this one, it's just undeniable. There's something about it that is really good. Say fuck it before I kick the bucket. <laughs> Life's too short to not go for broke. If I had one wish, I would ask for a big enough ass for the whole world to kiss. This one's sick. Oh, it's so good. It interpolates the bare naked ladies. If I had a billion dollars. Her voice is so weird sounding too. Like only that era could capture such a strange production choice. Yeah, because it, it mixes soul with like the really slow contemplative rap shit. Yeah. That isn't even like, there isn't a lot of that on some Shady LP. No. A lot of it is that kind of like all over the place character narrative building mm -hmm. stuff that is supposed to be like wonky and off the wall and this feels like a kind of a solipsistic moment for Eminem you yeah. know I, I love this song like I I, yeah. I genuinely really like it me too I gotta take it over Berserk but going into just the matchup I thought it was closer than it was and I apologize cleaning out my closet versus stay wide awake sorry mama I never meant to hurt you as a kid, that was like one of the first ones that got me into it. Yeah, same here. Of all Eminem's attempted singing performances where he's actually singing, yeah. this is one where it works to his benefit. I love that like rim hit and that driving guitar line. Like It's another one where he like flips the narrative to mean two things. Like when right. he's saying sorry to his mom, a lot of it is about how terrible his mom was to him. And right. he's almost like sorry for outing all that stuff, but he's going to do it anyway. And then when he says he's cleaning out his closet, I always read it as like double meaning of like he's cleaning the skeleton out of his closet, like all the stuff people may mm -hmm. learn about him in his life, but also like I'm cleaning out my closet like I'm leaving. You know, like, I, like I'm leaving my mom like in the dust. A world so cold, a world where all, at least will go. The voice he chooses to rap the verses in on this yeah. song is another example of relapse. Just He was just picking a different accent for every song. He was like, <sighs> Drake. I didn't like it. I like this song to an extent, mm. but I just wish he made some different choices. Yeah, I don't know. And that flow, soon as my flow starts, I compose off like the ghost of Mozart. Mozart. Cleaning out my closet. Yeah, I mean, it's easy. Superman versus Fastlane. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the easiest ones for me. Yeah. Some people love Fastlane, though. Specifically, Ant from NFL. NFR podcast. I was just about to say, not anybody I know, but proven wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to NFR podcast. Ant is a disturbed individual. Though. That's true. <laughs> you wouldn't guess it from their videos, but if you watch our videos with them, you'll see the dark the, side. The true Ant. Yeah. <laughs> Him on his show is like Marshall Mathers. Right. And on our show is Slim, Slim Shady. Shady. Yeah. Yeah. I do know one thing, no. Bitches, they come, they go. 
Saturday through Sunday, Monday, Monday through Sunday, yo. One of his best cadences of all time. I, okay, I feel like a very valid point that people make, specifically our generation and younger, they say nobody's playing Eminem in their car. Like you can't play Eminem around your friends. Fair. Nobody's bumping Eminem. That song you can bump. That song you can bump. In a certain way, it kind of reminds me of like old Justin Timberlake. Yeah, <laughs> I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like it just yeah. has like a sauciness to it mm -hmm. that like you can play that one and people are going to rock with it. And I feel like Drake kind of also like christened it by doing this yeah. Chicago freestyle. Of that flow is like timeless. Yeah, timeless flow. Absolutely. Life in the fast lane, life and I can't slow down. Him and Royce. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a good song. I It's just, it's not one of my favorites. It's not like a standout to me. Yeah, it should have been Nate Dogg on the hook. Superman. Mm -hmm. All right, now we got Mockingbird versus Who Knew. Oh shit. I feel like a lot of people have Mockingbird winning their Eminem bracket. Totally, and I didn't expect it to have a hard first round matchup, but Who Knew is yeah. crazy. Now, little baby, don't you cry. Everything's gonna be all right. Stiffen that upper lip up, little baby. <laughs> that melody is crazy too. I'm gonna break that birdie's neck. It is a sweet song. I never knew why, knew why to get this big. I never knew why, knew why to affect this kid. I never knew why. Mm, those string plucks with that flow. And just one of his most self-aware, like this yeah. is a really good encapsulating moment for Eminem where he's explaining the impact of blowing up off of his first album. Yeah. Well, his, his second album because of Infinite, but like, when he gets to this point, he's talking about his impact specifically on white kids yep. and being like, I didn't realize that I was going to be this famous either. Right. I didn't know that I was going to influence a generation of, of bad seeds, yeah. essentially. It wasn't a master plan. No. But then he also pokes fun at the idea that he kind of has that influence and can do whatever he wants and he's not going to do good things right. with that influence. <laughs> yeah. This one's really tough because Mockingbird is way more iconic. For sure. I really respect Who Knew and I, I just like the mood of that song Me a lot. Too. It just feels wrong to vote against Mockingbird in the first round. Yeah. I don't love kicking Who Knew out, but it kind of has to go here. I can agree with that. I think I'd rather listen to Who Knew right now, but Mockingbird I've spent way more time with in my life. Yeah. Now we got Like Toy Soldiers versus Beautiful. Back to an easy one. <laughs> He sings beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> A choir of baby M&Ms. <laughs> He was really playing with the military influence throughout his career. Always has, yeah. yeah left, like right, left. A little snare roll. <laughs> this song is so crazy when you know the backstory of it too. It's like basically the finale of Eminem's beef with Benzino and Ja Rule, where he was kind of backed up by 50 Cent and Busta Rhymes. But that beef was like so heavy and they were really going at each other. And those diss tracks are outrageous. Yeah. Some They say some insane shit to each other. This is him kind of like contextual Contextualizing that beef within the overarching conversation of rap beef in general right. and how it had turned violent and there were implications of people really lose their lives. It even talks about like Dre telling him to stay out of those beefs because yeah. it's not like his territory. And this is him swallowing his pride in a certain way and being like, I will squash it here. I don't want to be a part of this because he doesn't want it on his conscience. Someone else losing their life. Like it isn't yeah. that serious. Yeah. And like remains critical of the industry. Yeah. You know, we're pawns in this bigger game. I mean, I respect it. I, that song is great. It does have a little bit of that faux inspirational stuff he taps into on yeah. recovery, but because of what the song's about, it always hit for me. Never liked this song. Neither did I, but it has like I don't know, it doesn't cross over into like the bad territory. It just feels like well-worn territory for him. I feel like he has songs like Beautiful that are just better. It does have that one line, the I'll be one tough act to follow. I know somebody who has that tattooed on them. Really? We know someone who has that tattooed on them. <laughs> who is it? Ah, that's not that surprising. <laughs> it's like Toy Soldiers. Right. Last one on the first side, we've got Rap God versus Kim. <sighs> What a weird matchup this one is. I'm beginning to feel like a rap god, rap god. All my people from the front to the back, not back. What was he doing with his voice? I'm beginning to feel like I'm a rap. Yeah. yeah, it's like, okay, I'm going to try a whole different thing and I'm going to breathe way too much. It sounds like his throat is like clenched. Yeah. I'm beginning to feel like a rap god. Yeah, it's like EDM. It's so, eh, eh, it leaves a terrible taste in my mouth. And this is when he started to try to break Guinness records and shit. Like yeah. nobody wants to hear you rap that fast. It doesn't matter. No like, one wants that. You'll be in the trunk so long. 
I mean, a lot of people say that this is like kind of his masterpiece in narrative <laughs> because it is hard to listen to. Yes. But the same way, you know, like You by Kendrick Lamar or sure. even like We Cry Together. Yeah. There's like a certain element of like telling a story mm -hmm. and really going into the characters and not trying to make it like fun to listen to. Right. Like it's an insane song. I respect it from the narrative angle of like telling the story yes. and going all the way, like not pulling any punches. And he definitely didn't try to make it more listenable with his singing on this one either. But. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fact that there is any respect to give to Kim is more than I will give Rap God. Yeah, totally. You I know. think it's more of a creative triumph, even though if Kim comes out in the car, I'm skipping that as fast as I can. Oh, I'm embarrassed if it came out. I'll probably crash if I have friends in the car. Right. <laughs> Say, whoops. I'd probably tie him up and throw him in the trunk. Really? Yeah. That's what you'd do? I'm just inspired, With man. your friends. I'm I knew inspired. listening to all this M would be a problem for you. Listen, man. Got my haircut scheduled for next week. I know. You're going to bleach it. Short, blonde. I'm doing my own thing though. I'm not going to be exactly, I mean, you know, I'm definitely going to start doing open mics and I'm going to wear like big gray hoodies. And I also might start lying about how I grew up. At mm -hmm. least like downplay it a little bit. Like yeah. I wasn't like upper middle class. If anything, I was like lower middle. I'm, I was poor mm -hmm. and I lived in a trailer mm -hmm. and my mom adopted a girl who mm -hmm. was my age, and then we started dating and got married, and we had a kid. Well, a lot of that seems true. No, yeah, that that is my that's my life. Uh, I'm gonna be at the shelter next week for an open <laughs> mic. Uh, it's my first time, so if I choke up, just like no, there will be a comeback. But yeah, feel free to doubt me, though. That will fuel me. Yeah, the doubt will fuel me. Do you want to be f my future? What's that? You want to be like my best friend who hosts the rap battles or something? No. Do you want to be my like idiot friend who borrows his mom's gun and shoots himself in the leg? Not really. Hmm. You could be the guy who's fucking my mom. Yes, I'll take that one. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, he's about yeah. my age too, so that makes sense. Cool. All right, second side. We got Till I Collapse versus Love Game. <laughs> Ones versus sixteens are comical in this, yeah. more so than any other bracket. Till I collapse, I'm spilling these raps. Long as you feel them to the day that I drop, you'll never say that I'm not killing them. It's like a whole stadium of people clapping. I love that clap. <laughs> Well, it's a direct sample of We Will right. Rock You, which I didn't know until, I don't know how, I mm -hmm. never like even thought about it until we did it in samples. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, no wonder it's like yep. the big arena song, mm -hmm. his second biggest song of all time. Like It's a great tune. Yeah, Nate Dogg's on this one too, which Man. is not the one, like all the other ones, it makes sense that Nate Dogg's there and this one. Kind of takes him out of his element. But it works, yeah, it you does. know, like. To the roof, to the roof. Bitch, you serious? I'm in the mirror with this. Look on my face, curious. Why you ain't fucking with me? You cut me deep as a serious. Does he look back on that fondly? No. Why on earth would Eminem get Kendrick Lamar to be on a song with him? And this is the song that comes of it. Literally, if they just did a classic Dre beat and both right. just got to rap, that's a classic song that yeah. we all love. And we'd get to see like one of the goats like back in the day, obviously, but then like the modern goat and they're connected by a producer. They share Dr. Dre. So why would it be this song? It's like insane. It's sad. And I hate to linger on it. Yeah. Till I collapse. Right. <laughs> all right. Now we got when I'm gone versus is brain damage. When I'm gone, just carry on, don't mourn. Rejoice every time you hear the sound of my voice. One of my favorite emotional Eminem songs too. Like it is that kind of like pseudo posthumous. Like, okay, like when I'm dead, like remember me by this. And like, you know, I don't know. There's something really nice about the way he contextualizes it. And this is one of the rare times where I like his calm voice. This one remained like lukewarm for me. Brain damage ever since the day I was born. Drugs, what they used to say I was on. Do you know the story behind this song? Yeah, where he got his head kicked in at like 11 or whatever at school and he like actually had brain damage. He got beat up in the bathroom by, and he names him in the song, yeah. by by his bully, D'Angelo Bailey, whose yeah. dad was a boxer, mm -hmm. whole thing. Nobody in the school found him for hours. Yeah. So he they found him in the bathroom, knocked out. And then when Eminem blew up, this was another lawsuit. D'Angelo Bailey sued him for defamation. And this is the craziest part. The case was dismissed, but the the judge who dismissed the case wrote and recorded a rap song explaining why it got dismissed. Like it was not just like, you know, they sent a document that explains like this. He recorded a rap song and released it to the world. How am I ever going to speak to these kids? I got it. Plaintiff, drop that beat. <laughs> I also think like after that incident, his mom tried to sue the school. Yeah. And it got thrown out. I like the story behind it, but it's a whatever song to me from this album. That's fair. I like that song quite a bit and I do like it more than when I'm gone. I'm going to go when I'm gone. Grant, that leaves it to you. This is the hardest one for me so far. Uh, I'm gonna take brain damage though. That's fair, it's a close one for me. All right. <laughs> God. Now we got ass like that versus drug ballad. This is a tough first round matchup. It is not at all. Really? Are you kidding me? Yeah. No. 
I'm not. The way you shake it, I can't believe it. I ain't never seen a ass like that. He raps this entire song in a Middle Eastern I accent. Know. Yeah. It is offensive. Yeah, but like, well, are, right, are yeah. we throwing it out because no, of that? No, well, no, then let's every... just delete half the bracket. <laughs> oh no, it's offensive. I know, but it's just, it still leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, my memories of this song going into the bracket, I was like, oh, that's like one of my favorite Eminem <laughs> songs. And then I listened to it and was like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> He did that. I didn't know. I thought he was just doing a funny voice until like I grew yeah. up and then I listened to it and was like, oh no. No, he's being like legitimately racist right. on this song. It's a great hook though. Doing, doing, doing. The way she move it. Whoa. Yeah. On my sleeve. Whoa. I don't want it, but I gotta stay. Whoa. These drugs really got a hold of me. This is one of my favorite Eminem yeah. hooks of all time. That voice is crazy. Similar to uh, like if I had. How yeah. Ghostly, they make like a strange female vocal in the hook sound like juxtaposed to his. It's just so weird. This is great storytelling too. Like, oh, yeah. In the midst of like party Eminem, he's just like describing partying and like taking Molly and drinking a bunch of Bacardi. It's a wild song. Something keeps pulling on my sleeve. Whoa. Whoa. I love Drug Ballad. Me too. Drug Ballad wins, but people are going to be like, ass like that forever. <laughs> it make my pee pee go. Ah, boing, boing, boing. <laughs> All right, now we got Not Afraid versus Square Dance. I'm not afraid to take a stand, take a stand. Everybody. I mean, this is like his Lion King moment. It's cinematic, but it's one of my least favorite Eminem hits of all time. Yeah, it's also just like, since when? Like, when are you on all of this, you know? I don't know, he's like a bad boy the majority of his career, and now he's like taking a stand for everybody. <laughs> this mood for Eminem is not my vibe. Come on, man, let's all get on. Word answer with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the misses on the Eminem show are just big misses for me. This one I, I can get down with. I, I wouldn't listen to it in any other context than on an Eminem binge. Sure. You know what I mean? Like yeah. within the context of Eminem songs, this song is fine. Yeah, it's better than Not Afraid. For me, definitely. I mean, I could never hear Not Afraid again and be a happier person. No, <laughs> same here. Yeah. Now we got Crack a Bottle versus Soldier. Not the easiest one. So crack a bottle, let your body waddle. Don't act like a sloppy mom. God, I wish we could have heard that next line. I'm glad we didn't. I'm so, once you pointed it out to me, it's haunted me. I feel like I've had a nightmare about him saying, Tahoe. <laughs> like, bitch, it's happening in my Tahoe. I hate it. The way he was using auto-tune on that album specifically in like little moments made his hook so weird. Yeah, it's like, unnecessary. That hook writing is great. And mm -hmm. if it was just his normal voice, it would be better. Mm -hmm. But he just decided to do this, Tahoe. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> but at the time, you know, it was a hit. It's got 50 on it. Like this song is pretty awesome. Yeah. Aside from the fact that this song has a wrestling intro where yeah. it's like bragging. <laughs> About his assaults. <laughs> yeah. And in this corner, standing <laughs> at. Yeah, it's it's terrible and tasteless, but. It's as out of pocket as Eminem gets. So he kind of gets away with it. But like this song is such a hit that I'm like, why did you put this on the beginning of Crack a Bottle? It's also like, when did it come out? 2009. Yeah. You could do stuff like that. And people would be like. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's just a bad time for humanity all around. The world really hasn't gotten good until I'd say about the last six months. The last six months? The last six months, I'm finally like, ah, we figured it all out. We're good. Really? Yeah. Are you aware of like, nah. Any, nah, okay, well, nah. I guess. Well, I just saw like AI and my portfolio is way up. Your portfolio? Portfolio. Weird. That's how we say it in my Discord, my finance Discord group. Oh, okay. You view the world, you're getting closer to me. You, <laughs> you view the world broadly based on how you're doing financially? Not broadly, that's the key. Oh. You view the world through yourself, and your bank account. Oh. And since mine's gone up right. just a little bit, mm -hmm. I can only assume that the rest of the world's doing great. Great way to think. Great mindset, man. And if they're not doing great, they're lazy. Remind me after the show, I have to tell you about something. Okay. It's called empathy. Just remember, I'll-, I'll What's, I'll, it, what's I'll, it on the ticker? Like, how, and what's it cost right now? <laughs> I'll hopefully be able to buy you a few shares. So. <laughs> sure, man. Yeah, whatever. I'll swap you some Ford stock. We sold this hold up so much, they won't budge. I'll never fall the fuck up. I'm a soldier. Yeah, you know what? You're right. This one does not hit for me. No, it's like, it has like menacing, angry white guy energy. Yeah. I'm a soldier. It's like, mm, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't put a gun in his hands. <laughs> it reminds me of all the ROTC kids yeah. in my high school who became cops. I'm a soldier. And they're like yeah. always talking about like blowing people's brains out. Yeah. <laughs> Your job shouldn't be holding a gun, man. No. Um, it's crack a bottle. Yeah, it's crack a bottle. It's more fun. Shut up, 50. All right, now we got Love the Way You Lie versus Criminal. Ah, oh, you're not gonna like me here. Just gonna stand there and watch me burn. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Better hook than monster. Amazing hook, actually. Yeah. I wish this was just a Rihanna song, though. This version of Eminem, I don't need it. Like, I don't want there to be a big pop hit that's a Rihanna song with Eminem rapping on it. Like, I don't know. For some reason, this one's always just worked for me. It reminds me of, like, Macklemore and Skylar Grey. Love that. Okay, well. <laughs> just gonna stand there. Hear me scream. <laughs> That's all right, because I like the way you cream. <laughs> every time I write a rhyme, these people think it's a crime to tell them what's on my mind. I guess I'm a criminal. I don't gotta say a word. I'm a criminal! This would be one of my favorites on the entire bracket if he didn't do the South Park verse. Yeah. <laughs> he just, like, <laughs> raps as the South Park character. He's like, me, me, me. I'm like, <laughs> you're doing a parody of yourself right now. Like, yeah. I totally could see people being like, I don't like Eminem because he sounds like South Park characters. Right. And then he just does it. Yeah, I'm trying to think who that would be like doing, like, a Family Guy character today, but I don't care to think about that too much. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> for me. Thanks for thinking that out loud. I like for that. me. <laughs> Guilty, guilty as charged. It's I love the way you lie. It is criminal for me. You might call me criminal for loving it, but it's love the way. You I don't lie. know why you think people are gonna lock you up for liking <laughs> love the way. Like that's a huge hit song. Put me behind bars and throw away the keys. I like Rihanna. Sue me, cuff me, officer. <laughs> you fascist fuck, Grant. I will take criminal. Yes, thank you, Grant. Finally, we agree. <laughs> Guilty conscience versus remember me. This is a tough first yeah, round matchup too. Really. Like these should not be going against each other. What if there's an explanation for this shit? Why? She tripped, fell, landed on his dick. <laughs> All right, Shay. On paper, a way better song than it is like out loud. It's like perhaps his most controversial song of all time. Yeah. And some people call it his best narrative of all time because it is like graphic and visual and fucked up without a doubt, morally depraved right. and terrible, all of the things that he's saying. But it is kind of like a masterpiece in a certain way. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, if you buy into the Slim Shady thing, it's one of the most iconic songs in his catalog. I think both can be true. I think it can be really iconic and just not that great of a song at the end of the day. You know you can't Remember me. Where is he always going? <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> he's like, he's like, guess who's back? Like, remember me? Like, yes, they remember you. Yeah. You're the biggest rapper in the world. <laughs> you have hits on the radio from your last album when this song comes out. Of course they remember you. Until he started breaking world records, his whole identity was like, I'm not good enough. Remember me? I'm still here. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs> For me, it's remember me. I'm going guilty conscience. I'll take remember me. <laughs> Guilty conscience leaving first round of an Eminem bracket is like the most insane shit we've done on a bracket for sure. Godzilla versus the ringer. Neither. They cannot tame a placate the monster. You get in my way, I'm gonna feed you to the monster. I'm normal during the day. I'll say it. I know, it's not terrible. This song's pretty good. Yeah, it's like bad. it's like a surprise, pretty good late era Eminem song, Juice World Hook, Lyrical Lemonade Video, big moment. And yes, he does break a world record yeah. in the back half of it. I don't like him doing this thing, but it's probably the best version. Yeah, it's the best version of it. That's yeah. all. That's all there is to it. I love the bass line. Possibly I'm dead. I must be possessed like an evil spell. I'm E V I L. Evil spell. <laughs> What are you supposed to say? <laughs> the Ringer with Johnny Knoxville is a better piece of art than this song. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to say. <laughs> yeah. And somehow this song is much less problematic than that movie, but. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In an evil spell, I'm E-V-I-L. And he goes, spelling, get it? <laughs> like, he always does that on his new stuff. He's like, yeah. get it? I'm like, yeah. That's we got like, it. <laughs> people have genius.com. Like, let them figure it out. We got it. You know? This is the only time we're going to say this, too. Godzilla walks. <laughs> oh, easily. I'm voting for it in the next round. <laughs> now we got My Name Is versus River. Oh, the one with Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran's on My Name Is? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Early. Hi, my name is Hi, My name is Hi, My name is the Lobby set free sample. He's got some moments in his career where you're like, wow, that shit actually happened. Like this was his first big single. It's the first song he ever made with Dr. Yeah. Dre and it was the first day that he met him. Yep. He was playing that beat and he just blurted out, hi, my name is, like, it's insane. It's mythical. Hi kids, do you like violence? You wanna watch me put nine inch nails through my eyelids? Been a liar, been a thief, been a lover, been a cheat on my sin. I prefer. I prefer Eminem's parts in that song. Oh, me too. <laughs> Ed Sheeran in this context is like vomit-inducing. This song should have never happened? Yeah, and for what it's worth, I'm sorry.
I'm just sorry that it, the song exists. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Now we got, oh my God, ugh. We got Evil Deeds versus Kill You. Another one that is like two of my favorites in this entire bracket. One of them's gotta die. Father, please forgive me for I know not what I do. I just never had the chance to ever meet you. He met him. Well, yeah, Bruce. Yeah. Bruce Mathers. <laughs> is he talking about like his actual dead or is he talking about like God because he's doing like the father forgive them for they know not what they do? I mean, what makes me comfortable is like all of his songs are something like not exactly his own life. You know, they're all right. kind of fiction. It's right. about the only way I can palette it. Yeah, that's the only way I can vote for kill you in this round. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to extrapolate the logic you're about to use on evil deeds into the other one. You end up in a muddy kind of ground. Also, we're so far into round one, I can't believe I haven't said this yet, but Go like, ahead. obviously we're gonna pick songs that have things that are indefensible in them right. and like say words that we don't condone the use of. However, you just have to look at it for what it is. We're just talking about it like musically and what it meant to impact at the time. And no one should listen to as much Eminem as we have in the last three weeks. That's true. That's so true. we did it for you, so you don't have to do it. And our souls are forever tarnished. Unless you are, of course, a huge Eminem fan who this is the first thing you ever watched us do. Right. In which case, rock on, brother. <laughs> keep listening to as much Eminem as you want to, but uh, hopefully you also have an understanding that his early career is trapped in a time where saying those things for shock value meant something different than saying any of those things now. Yeah. I hate having to do that, but it's an Eminem bracket, so you kind of have to. What the fuck with Sadie? Because why? Because Sadie will fucking kill you. One of my favorites. One of my favorites too. It, it, it is one that is like, j just shocks me. Like this came out in 2000. Eminem was dating Mariah Carey in 2001. This is like if Tyler the Creator, when he released Bastard and Goblin, was like on TRL with Katy Perry. Or like dating Adele. Yeah. <laughs> it is just fucking weird that he was doing all of this and was that famous. Mm -hmm. It was cool. He was like a punk rocker. You know what I mean? Yeah, in a certain way it was cool. It's like a rock star attitude kind of thing. <laughs> This didn't exist until Eminem did exactly. it. Exactly. Like that version of it didn't exist until Eminem did it. So the maniacal, murderous white guy. He invented it. Well, <laughs> and look at us that's, now. No, that's been. <laughs> look at what he's done to society. Right. I will say our show probably would not be the same if it weren't for Slim Shady. I mean, I see what you're getting at. But come on. It, alter egos have been around forever. Alter egos? I'm just talking about the other co host is super inspired by Slim Shady, and you're more of an Eminem guy. No, I'm not. I'm a Marshall Mathers fan. From a business standpoint, he is up there. Oh, no. <laughs> You seen his <laughs> NFT, his online artwork? Okay, yeah, I don't really want to. Have you about seen it? it? I, yeah, I've seen it. We didn't include. Oh, that's good. We didn't include the NFT Snoop Dogg song in this bracket either. But really, <laughs> why, why have I listened to it so much then? Probably because it makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, it's Kill You. Kill yeah. You is gonna walk. All right, now we got Forever versus I'm Back. I'm back. <laughs> Forever makes another appearance in another bracket. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It may not mean nothing to y'all. Understand nothing was done for me. It's weird to hear Drake's voice in an Eminem bracket. It's refreshing to say the least, pal. <laughs> <laughs> it is really like, <gasps> it's like I got my head out of the water <laughs> for a second. God, play it again. <laughs> And against like 90% of the other Eminem songs, I think I do vote for Forever just because it is like a true mashup kind of posse track of the whole gang. But I'm Back is fire. I'm Back is fire and I don't share that sentiment. Forever is a, it's, it's, it's a, a great song. It's a great song, but it, it's not an Eminem, like Eminem. It's not an anybody song. It's a Drake song. It's a great song. It's a great song comprised of great artists. But Eminem is like the last 30 seconds of the song. But it is his song. And it's Drake's song. They yeah. both put it out, but <laughs> we need that collab album. What a time to be alive too. <laughs> Eminem and Drake. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm back. Easy. Now we got Sing for the Moment versus My Fault. Sing with me, just found it. Oh, I love when he does the old rock shit. Aerosmith sample. Mm -hmm. This, ah, uh, like, it's like he was showing the world where he was about to go. You know what I mean? I mean, when he becomes so rock influenced, like later on, it is like his invention of rock that he's like rapping on. I like when he's doing it over like classic, like I like Berserk in that way. And I like this song in that way. Cause it is yeah. like an old classic rock song that he's using. Uh, this one's okay to me. I just don't think that his rapping is all that interesting. Fair. Like, it's just kind of like, he's saying whatever. It's another like inspirational Eminem mm -hmm. song. No, it's middle the road, but it's it's good. I never meant to give you mushrooms, girl. I never meant to bring you to my world. But now you're saying in the corner crying. 
like I'll say this is for me maybe what guilty conscious is for you. Like this is his genius narrative for me on full display here. Well, yeah, it's a great story, but it's like a dumb story. Guilty conscience is like really difficult to wrap your mind around. This yeah. is like a party story. This is more defining of like his actual musical personality to me though. I love this song because it's so catchy. Yes. It's <laughs> so out of pocket goofy that like you can't even listen to it like a normal <laughs> song. Put the scissors down before you do something you regret. <laughs> Quit pulling on my t-shirt. <laughs> I love this song. I'm going with my fault. Yeah, my fault. I think he's taking a crap, dude. <laughs> All right, now we got Encore slash Curtains Down versus Role Model. It's not that tough for me. It's kind of tough for me. Came here to set this party off right. Let's bounce tonight. My hot take is I don't really fuck with that song. I really fuck with that song. Yeah. Cause I don't want to leave the game without at least saying goodbye. <laughs> he's either saying goodbye or he's saying I'm back. That's kind of like <laughs> what Eminem does best. Fuck y'all, I'm out. <laughs> Remember me? <laughs> That one's badass. Ah, it's so nasty, and I love this Dre beat. Like, I don't know, this one's so much better than Encore to me. It's almost like he shouldn't have made Who Knew after making this song. Right. Because he's literally like, don't you want to grow up to be just like me? Like, go do this, go do that. He's literally yeah. telling the kids to go out and do all this fucked up shit. Next album, he's like, who knew he would do it? Like, I just said to do it. Yeah, but then again, that's like the juxtaposition of the Slim Shady and Marshall Mathers. Yeah, I do like Encore a lot. I'll go Role Model, though. I think Role Model's a better song. White America versus <laughs> must be the ganja. <sighs> His voice saying white America is great. Oh yeah, like I never heard anything like that. <laughs> white America! He sounds like a dictator. Yeah, That's like the done. whole thing. <laughs> I will say this to me is kind of like the total encapsulation of how self-aware he was at this yeah. moment that it is impossible to believe how much he lacks self-awareness now. Like yeah. I kind of am like, where did he lose that? The way he talks about it on this song, it really hits it from all angles. It's like a unique way to talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's not like a fun song to listen to. Yeah. It really like zeroes in on exactly why Eminem was popular, how much he knew why he was popular. And he does it in still being like funny. Like he yeah. says a lot of funny shit on this song. Like I love that he's like, Erica loves my shit. Yeah. You know, like he's using, you know, like white names. Like Yeah, the Eminem shows like his peak of self-awareness. It's the ganja, it's the marijuana that's creeping up on me while I'm so high. Oh, this melody is so nasty, though. I do not like this song very Oh, much. really? No, it's okay. This album is full of voices that I don't like. I don't know if I'd even heard it until really? like a month ago. <laughs> That's crazy. And I was like, okay, I don't like this, right? And then like a week later, I was like, it's the marijuana. With the <laughs> ganja. He's in a pocket here that to me just like scratches a real certain itch, but I don't think it's I don't know. Uh, oh, I don't know. Well, you know where I'm going. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to vote for white America. Because I agree, like, white America is, like, I don't want to say profound, but it is, like, a more meaningful song in the catalog. I do think it's cool, like, that level of self-awareness he's at at that moment. But just pure listenability for me, I love the cadence on Must Be the Ganja, and there's, like, not really a cadence in white America where it's, I'm, like, grooving. Sure, yeah, I mean, hey. I'm like, going to leave it up to you, Grant. I'm going to take Must Be the Ganja. It's the marijuana. You guys are ruining this bracket. Oh my God. <laughs> White America Lee's first round. Now we got Haley's song versus Bad Meets Evil. I think we'll agree here though. I don't even care about either of these songs that much. <laughs> I just wish that other songs went against these. I don't understand why we have The Ringer versus Godzilla. <laughs> and then we have Evil Deeds versus Kill You. It's like. But then she comes back to me. Is worst a singing performer. Wrong. Like, no, he's, Wrong. he says it in the song. He's like, sorry, I tried to sing, but I just can't. E <laughs> it's operatic. I like the sentiment, but I, yeah. I hate listening to the song. I don't know. This one grew on me too, for whatever reason. Cause I don't agree with police these shit. Me neither. We ain't eager to be legal. So please leave me with the keys to your GP. Besides for one bar in the hook, it kind of stands the test of time, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, most of what Royce says on that song doesn't really stand up, but... Yeah. I mean, Eminem has tons sure. of that all over the whole bracket, but... Their back and forth, to me, is just so classic. Yeah, I mean, this song is hard, but, like, it is bottom half of Slim Shady LP for me. Yeah, that's fair. It's top half for me, and it is better than Haley's song. I just kind of wanted to stand up for Haley's song a little bit, because he does kind of nail that falsetto. Uh, I'll go Bad Meets Evil. I like that song. Now we got The Real Slim Shady versus Talking to Myself. <laughs> Tough one. <laughs> I'm Slim Shady, yes, I'm the real Shady. All you other Slim Shadies are just imitating, so what the real- 
It's a classic for a reason. What yeah. a song. So many crazy bars on that song I forgot about too. And like no one was even imitating him at this time. That's not true. Well, not to the degree that it became like later. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, there were definitely some rappers trying to be Eminem at yeah. that time. And I also think like people underestimate the uh, the gravity of his like style. Yeah. I went to school in rural Ohio, public school, and then like fifth grade, everyone was wearing baggy shorts and dyeing their hair blonde and having a shaved head and like wearing beanies and baggy hoodies. Not even a question. If you were going to be cool, that's how you dressed. Yeah. My friends who wouldn't even describe themselves as rap fans growing up were trying to be Eminem. None of them even rapped. They just would dress like Eminem, yes. act like him and be a fucking like a bad kid. Yeah. I think that's more or less what I was trying to say is like the space in the rap game wasn't yet occupied by a bunch of imitation, but like globally, the young white youth of the time was like, I'm Slim Shady. And yeah. he's like, ah! It's funny how like, you know, like Colossus by yeah. Tyler the Creator is kind of like his stan, you sure. know? And then people do their version of the real Slim Shady. Like this is another like right. archetype of song, like the Lil Pump song, mm -hmm. Like Me or yeah. whatever, the one with Lil Wayne, where he has like, he's in like a crowd of a bunch of people who look like him. People do that in music videos all the time. Yep. They do like a thing where it's like, everybody's a clone of me. I might be mistaken. I don't know if there was another one before this, but it feels like they're all doing their real Slim Shady moment, yeah. you know? Kobe Honeycutt? Can't do an Eminem bracket without mentioning the vocal stylings of Kobe Honeycutt. <laughs> Sounds like a name I'd make up. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could come up with a name like that. Yeah. That is electric. Feel Move. like I'm talking to myself. Can you imagine if Fetty Wap had done that instead? Might as well. It would be better. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds similar. Like yeah, a certain it does. Way, like a, you would have been great, but yeah, it's real Slim Shady. Let us know down in the comments if we forgot any songs. Of course we did forget some. There's a lot. No more clips. We're just going to play it out. Lose Yourself versus Say What You Say. Give me the Academy Award winning Lose Yourself. Academy Award winning? What did it win? <laughs> oh, best song in a movie? Yeah, it's the only uh, Oscar winner here. Does Eminem have a chance to get an EGOT? I guess. I you mean, have to win a Tony. Uh, <gasps> they could do Eminem the musical. They could, and they're already doing Eight Mile the Show. 50 Cent has the license to it. Oh, really? Yeah. Are they taking auditions? <laughs> because I think I could be Brit. Good for uh, Marshall Mathers, maybe? Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, by next week when I have my buzz cut and my blonde hair and I perform I at the shelter, you know, the whole thing I was talking about earlier? I still don't think. You don't think I could be Slim Shady? Oh, man. Comments? Let me know. You could be looking at the next Marshall Mathers from the 8 Mile TV show produced by, produced by 50 Cent? I think so. I feel like Dr. Dre should produce it, but whatever. <laughs> you could be. Just I'm saying, like, let me know down in the comments, maybe, uh, or actually let me know if I would be terrible and then that will fuel me. Like how all the haters fueled Eminem? I don't know. I'm just, hey, listen, could be me. Lose yourself it is. We wouldn't have Remember the Name by Fort Minor if we didn't have Lose Yourself first. And I'm grateful for that. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. Me too. At least top three. <laughs> all right, now we got The Monster versus Business. Can we at least, can we, come on. We can give them the business. Yes. Trust me. You don't want to go into business with a monster. <laughs> but I would like to go into business with monster. I won't rehash it, but I do have the best monster energy commercial idea of all time. Real fans, real hive mind fans will remember that. So uh, if anybody has any contacts over at the energy drink factory, Bitch Please 2 versus Just Lose It. Ooh, I love the hook on Bitch Please 2, but Just Lose It is a cooler song. Yeah. Ah, I mean, come on. Ah. On Pee Wee alone, it wins. Yeah. Now we got Rock Bottom versus Without Me. Without Me, not even a question. Yeah, Rock Bottom is a great song. It is. I'm going to go with Without Me which is a hard thing that I just had to say. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. But Rock Bottom is kind of like a class. I feel like people who don't really like Eminem respect Rock Bottom as like a crazy early Eminem song. Fair enough, but Without Me's top tier for me. All right, now we got Stan versus Shake That. Now let's think about this one. Definitely tough. I'm leaning 99% to 1% here. Oh. 100% Stan. Okay, yeah. Shout out Dido. There will be no white, white flag, flag above, above my door. door. I'm in love, and I always will. And shout out Elton John for one of the best live performances of it of all time. Right. An olive branch. It was a weird olive branch. And remember Eminem references that on another song like later yeah. on. He says like, me and Elton playing Russian roulette with our careers. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how people feel or felt about Elton John doing that, but it definitely helped Eminem. For sure. If I had versus cleaning out my closet. Where are you leaning? I'm going to lean cleaning out my closet here. I think if I had is like, it's an amazing song, but it's not top three or four on Slim Shady LP 
for me. That's fair. It's kind of middle of the road on that album. I was kind of leaning, cleaning out my closet. I was leaving the door cracked for you to convince me the other way. But seeing that that's not the case, I will go with cleaning out my closet. <laughs> I'm sorry, mama. Now we got Superman versus Mockingbird. Oh, this is kind of a fitting matchup. It's pretty easy for me. I'm leaning Superman. Yeah, I'm all the way Superman. Shout out Clark Kent, kind of the Marshall Mathers of Superman. Like Toy Soldiers versus Kim. It's like Toy Soldiers for me. Yeah. I'm not like sold entirely. I could be convinced, I guess. I don't know. No, I mean, yeah. Kim's not fun to listen to. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad not. he did it and yeah. it's crazy and fucked up. And I'm glad he did it. I mean, make the song, not like I'm glad he did it. Like the stuff in the song, Kim. But yeah, I mean... <laughs> You don't have to clarify that. Just to be clear, I mean, listen. I'm not happy about the potential murder of his wife, okay? Ex wife. Right. But I'm happy that he made it. We this did one. it, man. Okay. We just just saying, it. I'm just making it clear. I don't want anybody to get me misconstrued, man. I hate I know, being misconstrued. I know you do, but it's like some things just don't need to My whole up. life I've been misunderstood, too, as a white rapper growing up in Detroit. I mean, it was <laughs> it was tough, you know. People you think that it would work to my advantage, but honestly, <laughs> for a while me. it didn't. Where it was the opposite until yeah. Dre came along and kind of like gave me that cosine I needed. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna go like Toy Soldier. We songs. are, <laughs> and I get it. You don't want to murder anyone. Not that I don't want to. It's that I won't. I'll stop myself. <laughs> Other side. Now we got Till I Collapse versus Brain Damage. Till I Collapse, handedly. Yeah. Drug Ballad versus Square Dance. Drug Ballad, handedly. Drug Ballad, easily. We got two easy matchups, and then we're gonna get to some tough ones, I think. Now we got Crack a Bottle versus Criminal. This is tough, and I don't know if people are gonna fuck with us anymore. I go Criminal. I go Criminal too. I feel like people are gonna be upset about Crack a Bottle leaving. I don't think so. No? I think that still. To a lot of Eminem fans, I feel like that's viewed as more of like a corny radio song. Okay. It's not corny, but like, it just isn't like people. Quintessential. Yeah, people don't like hold it close to their heart. Like, man, that's one of the best Eminem songs. It's just kind of like a cool radio song he did, you know? One of the first songs I got grinded on, too. Oh, really? <laughs> yep. Crack a bottle, let your body waddle. Don't act like a soggy model, you just hit the lotto. Wah -oh, wah -oh. <laughs> don't look at me like I was that, hoping man. you would maybe grind. You said <laughs> I was just. I'm not going to start. You realize what it's like to be grinded on? You go like this. That's what happens. Okay, just stay like that. Crack a bottle, let your body... It's, it is a tough... Yeah. It's a tough... Let's not. Okay. We don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep you... You're waddling. Let's keep it on that half. No, we're right? on the same page, man. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. think it's a good idea to grind on you. <laughs> I don't think it is either. At least not now. Like, <laughs> right. Seems like the... Like, at least we would have to be in a better position for it. It's an inopportune time. Right. Hey. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth, man. Yeah. But at some point, right? Maybe. No. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Remember me versus Godzilla. Godzilla. Wait, have you... <laughs> I mean, it's pretty clear Godzilla's a better song. <laughs> okay, that's what I think too, but yeah. you did like the whole thing last round where uh -huh. you were like, I can't believe Godzilla like would win a round and then I was like, I'm voting for it. Right. But beat the ringer. It beat like a dead baby to death. <laughs> Which I'm not glad that he did that, by the way. <laughs> Just as a... <laughs> I mean, it fit in the cadence of the song, sure. Right. But I'm not promoting... Of course not. Pulverizing an already pulverized corpse of yeah. a baby. Yeah. <laughs> and that was like the heyday of dead baby jokes and sure. all things. Man. Godzilla goes to the sweet 16. What the fuck is wrong with us? All right, now we got My Name Is versus Kill You. My name is Kill You. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, it's obvious. You want to drag it out for attention? <sighs> but I wish it wasn't obvious because like, like, I think this is two top five Eminem songs to me. That's fair. Like I think Kill that's You like, is like really risen up in the ranks for me. It's like, a great Song. Wow, what a crazy song. His delivery is just so emphatic, too. Yeah. Like, he really is, like, full throttle. Bitch, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't squash the beef. But my name is, is just... It's my name is. It's yeah. my name is. Now we got I'm Back versus My Fault. For me, it's I'm Back. Oh. But this is, like, again. Call you Slim Shady. I'm, I'm back. back. And it has that... I'm wah, 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 wah. I think I like the rapping more on my fault, but that hook alone on I'm Back is so good that it's like making it tough for me. Yeah. I think I go my fault. Okay, Grant, what is it? I'm taking my fault. Shroom story moves on. All right, now we got role model versus must be the ganja. You can do it. It's it's role model. But don't yeah. do it like to concede to You can me. do it. Don't like do that. Oh, I'm, I won't even pick what I want just to appease you. That's not what these brackets are about. Stand up for what you believe. Well, I do believe role model is a better song, but I'm just sad to see it go. So you. You just do it. It's kind of like, I know you got to put my dog down because he has HIV. Right. I don't want you to. I love the guy. Yeah. And I also feel like it's kind of your dog. You should be putting your dog down. Right. I don't know why you would ask me to do it. Well, you're a better shot than me. True. 
and I guess, you know, I have always talked about like wanting to if there was. Yeah. It's kind of like the idea of like, you know, when you go into a bar, sometimes you hope some guy says something disrespectful to like your girlfriend or one of your friends or whatever. So that you get the chance to be the hero with the punch. Mm -hmm. You have the justified punch situation. Yeah. I'm kind of waiting for a dog to have HIV. <laughs> To blast its brains out. <laughs> you know? I'm really trying to get into character here, yeah. guys. This is not me. I also, don't want to kill a dog. <laughs> but I do want to be in the new 8 Mile show. And yeah. I feel like this is the stuff they're looking for. Also, don't get it twisted. Dog AIDS is different. Oh, totally. And it's bad. Oh, yeah. It's worse. <laughs> it's way worse. Arguably. But well, there's a big debate going on about is. which one's worse. But Bad Meets Evil versus The Real Slim Shady. Oh. Yeah, he's standing up. I see what he's doing. <laughs> Third round? Yes, sir. All right. Sweet 16, here we go. Lose Yourself versus Business. I don't even think Business is that strong. No. Like, it's a good song, but, like, I'd rather listen to... Would I rather listen to Lose Yourself, though? That's kind of the point I'm at right now with the wavering and the back and forth that I'm doing is, like, Lose Yourself is solidified as, like, champion of a song. But it is, like, it's the only song on this bracket, literally the only one, that I have legitimately heard too much. Yeah. It is better than business though. Yeah, so maybe totally. we save the, some of this wavering for later on. Yeah, that's fair. Just lose it versus without me. It's without me easily here. Just lose it almost got to this point on a bit of a novelty. It has so much energy in it, but without me has like the energy and some. Yeah, I think these are similar songs yeah. in a certain way, but without me is like the blueprint for it mm -hmm. and is the best version of it. Now we got Stan versus cleaning out my closet. Oh man. I mean, it's got to be Stan, but it's tough that these two have to go this early. I I think Stan is better by a mile because Clean Out My Closet, like while it is great, the singing on it does like kind of rub me the wrong way. And Stan is one of those that's like expert level narrative Eminem with a great hook from Dido. Oh shit, how am I supposed to send this shit out? <laughs> I have one tiny little issue with Stan that mm -hmm. I will bring up later because for now I'm it's gonna move on. It's gonna move on. Yeah. It gives me goose pimples when I hear it. <laughs> goose pimples. <laughs> you ever get goose zits all over your body? <laughs> A geese is it? <laughs> I'm flirting. <laughs> I'm not flirting. <laughs> I'm talking about goose zits. Yeah. How is that flirting? Okay. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you today? <laughs> like the Rizzler or something. What the fuck? <laughs> now we got Superman versus Like Toy Soldiers. Superman. Yeah. We don't even have to talk about that. <laughs> Till I Collapse versus Drug Ballad. Say your piece. It's drug ballad. I think you're right. Till I Collapse is great. It's epic. It's got that whole like sports arena vibe <laughs> to it. You know what I mean? But I'm not hanging out in sports arenas as much as I'm popping pills. Which I don't think is the message of the song. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't really read into like what the song means, but drug ballad wins. Yeah, I don't condone the murder and stuff, but the, the drugs, I'm, I'm not condoning either. <laughs> But I'm fine with it. What a weird way to say that. <laughs> but That's I'm what condoning means. <laughs> Whatever, man. Okay, cool. Yeah. Leave the condoning at home. Someone pass me the codeine. I don't codeine nothing unless it's a seven up. <laughs> I don't condone codeine, but I've seen Stranger Things, Matthew Modine. He plays Papa in Stranger <laughs> Things. Enough of it. And he was on Broadway. Very talented <laughs> yeah, guy. It's going to be very sad when he dies. <laughs> I get it. It's going to die soon, too. He's old <laughs> as shit. A lot of people are going to die soon. Absolutely. But he's <laughs> like, one of them. Matthew Modine. If I he dies you. before Stranger Things is finished, I'm going to straight up end it. <laughs> the show or yourself? The show. <laughs> okay, great. I'm going to go over there and go, you can't do it without Papa. <laughs> Rip the film right out of the camera. They're going to try to do a whole hologram Tupac thing with him, I think. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they have the budget. <laughs> Matthew Modian's going to go on tour. I yeah, know right. it. Now we got Criminal versus Godzilla. Criminal. I'm sorry about Godzilla getting this far. Guys. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> it won't happen next time. <laughs> R.I.P. Juice World, though. Yeah. My name is versus my fault. My name is. Yeah, you're right, but I'm sad to see my fault go. Me too. That is just such a fun song. If only it could have gone up against Godzilla. <laughs> now we got Role Model versus The Real Slim Shady. It's The Real Slim Shady. Yeah. I didn't really expect us to have all the big hits in the Elite Eight. That's true, but like you said earlier, there's such a discrepancy between some of them. So like if they get put up against anything either mediocre or dog shit, piss hole, terrible, yeah. they're going to walk no matter what. Yeah, that's true. It's just like some of the early matchups have like these sneaky favorites of yeah. mine that I thought would be here and then lose to maybe like the big giants, yeah. but 
interesting list. The Elite Eight. Lose Yourself versus Without Me. It's Without Me easily here. Yeah, Lose Yourself, again, it's just got that novelty to it. Like, it stood the test of time, but Without Me is a more exciting song. It's also like with Lose Yourself, although it is cinematic by nature, it's like still this kind of like uplifting underdog tale. And if I want like the cinematic great Eminem song, it's Stan, because that is like a movie of a song within itself. Different type of movie, though. Right. Like, Lose Yourself is oh, more yeah, of like yeah. an action movie or a sports movie. Sure. <laughs> and Stan is more of like a thriller. Yeah, you know me. Yeah, you love thrillers. Yeah, I hate a fucking action movie. Okay. More like John Dick. <laughs> more like John Whack. Doesn't rhyme, but sure. Yeah. It doesn't have to rhyme, it just replaced <laughs> one letter. Same, and it rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> and dicks are funny. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> we'll leave it up to Marshall. Marshall, what do you think? Dude, do you think he would watch this? I think he is. If he watches this, I, ha I will say one thing, aside from all the jokes and all that stuff, I will say from doing this bracket, I have discovered like a true like respect for mm -hmm. Eminem and like what he was able to do. Because I fell victim to the whole thing of our generation of being like, Clowner. Eminem's kind of a joke now yeah. or whatever. And I don't think the latter half of his career is very good. I think there's a lot of music that is not hit for me, but I didn't expect to really love the first half of his career as much on revisiting. I was like, wow. Wow. I hung out in trailer parks too much to ever forget that. Yeah. It's without me and yeah. uh M, I'll say my two cents. <laughs> now we got Stan versus Superman. I think we're going to be split here, probably. I don't know if I can, in good conscience, say that Superman's a better song than Stan, but I think in my current life, I, I much prefer listening to Superman. And I mean, at this point, we do. I mean, they're both great songs. They've made it this far. And yeah. I think we both kind of got a vote on our personal taste. Let me give my Stan caveat, though. Go ahead. I will say this. Love that whole song, the narrative, everything that leads up to whatever. But then the the last line, literally, where he's like writing the letter and he's reading about a guy who drove his car off the bridge. And I think his name was Stan too. Oh wait, it was you. Like that line comes off as like cornball to me. Rewrite it then. Maybe I will. I would have rhymed with like, oh, uh, like. <laughs> I would have said maybe like his name was Stan as well. Must have been a coincidence. So it leaves it up for like interpretation. Because then you don't know if it was actually that Stan. It could have been a different Stan. Stanley. Stan Musial. Great baseball player. Cardinals predominantly, from what I understand. <laughs> Great player, though. It is Stan for me. It's Superman for me. g -babe. I'm Stan. I figured that would happen, but... Saturday through Sunday, Monday. Monday, Monday through Sunday, Sunday, yo. Drug Ballad versus Criminal. Here's where I think I take Drug Ballad. I need two. Just the South Park thing. That's the only thing that's holding me back from Criminal. For me, it's the hook. And I, like, that's what it's gonna come down to, I feel like, overall for me, is, like, when the hook's really good, I can forgive some things in the verses. It's a decent hook, but that... Criminal! I don't know. I'm a criminal. Last matchup here. My name is versus the real Slim Shady. This is strangely pretty easy for me. For me too. Where are you leaning? My name is. Same. Yeah. Talking there's, about laying the blueprint down. Yeah, there's similar songs, yeah. but like my name is, is just the better version of it and is like the first one. It's such a landmark thing. Yeah, the angst that's like contained there is more enjoyable too. The everybody's copying me thing in the real Slim Shady. It's like, you know, it's he not, pulls it off. it's not my favorite energy though. Same. You know? Yeah, not to get into like energies and stuff, but just like certain energies I'm definitely attracted to and some I repel. Just for my own mental health and keeping the spaces around me to feel safe and comfortable for me. I respect everybody and love everybody, of course, but there's just certain energies that, uh, that I'm attracted to. So I guess that's like the way that I'd put it, but a lot of people don't understand my twisted mind, so. You are stinking up the joint with all this energy talk. <laughs> I also haven't showered in six weeks, but. <laughs> Reeks out. <laughs> I'm preparing for the role. I assume Marshall didn't shower. He bathed, you're right. Correct. I don't have a bath, so I'm working on it. But the rest of the stuff, I feel like I'm nailing. Yeah, especially the energy stuff, man. I started working at the stamp, stamp fa factory. <laughs> the stamping <laughs> factory. I worked there. I work there now. Cool. cool, man. You didn't like bang your girlfriend in the factory, did you? You been reading my diary? <laughs> No, I don't have a girlfriend. All right. Just kidding, I do. Just kidding, I don't. <laughs> All right, it's my, it's my name is. I'm so misunderstood, man. <laughs> Final four is set. We got Without Me versus Stan and Drug Ballad versus My Name Is. So this is a great four. I'm happy with this. I'm semi-happy with it, for sure. First one, Without Me versus Stan. I feel like there's not very many Eminem fans out there who would say that Without Me is better than Stan. But I think, I don't know, just where I am in my life right now or whatever it is, Without Me is kind of just like, it's that hitter. It is for me too. Yeah, that's kind of crazy though. Stan is borderline the lose yourself thing. And I know you compared yeah. them in the other way, like yeah, earlier. Yeah. But like- I Stan, agree though. Like Stan has its 
its own life that it yeah. lives. It's an Eminem song, yes, but he's definitely like reeling certain things in and doing it in a way that appeals to a lot of people. Kind of a genius song in so many in ways. A lot of ways. Yeah. But without me, gets me excited. There's something kind of crazy about that song. I can't believe I'm even saying this, but like, yeah, I think that's I'm where I am too. I can't believe it either. I thought we were gonna have to disagree, and then Grant was gonna say, "Dido fucking rules," like he, he does all the time. <laughs> right. Right. He's a big Dido fan. It's without me too. I'm glad we did that. Okay. Without me, going to the finals. Fuck Stan. <laughs> you better not be talking about Stan Mutual. I'm not, dude. I famous didn't even know MLB, who that was. Famous until, like, MLB baseball player. I get it. Predominantly with the Cardinals. Cardinals. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I got it. Great hitter. Drug Ballad versus My Name Is. It's an underdog tale for me. You think Drug Ballad's better than My Name Is? No, actually, no. They really get a hold of me. What? Yeah, no. Nah, yeah, it's not better. Right, it's not right, better than my name right. is though. I thought it was. Right. Here I thought has my name is like taken on a life of its own. Is it too played out? No, nah, cuz it's like his name. <laughs> <laughs> Like his name. Yeah, my bad, bro. <laughs> my bad. Uh, how could I forget that? Yeah. If his name was Stan, then like, <laughs> yeah. But he says my name is, and then I got it. Chicka chicka, Slim Shady. <laughs> Yep, my name is goes to the final. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's our final two. Are we going to put a poll for him to vote, Riley? Yes, we are. There's going to be a poll in the chat right now. Bang, real quick. bang, bang. Without me or my name is for best Eminem song. Also, let us know down in the comments what you think should have won. Where we inevitably screwed up. And if you're new to the channel, check out the other brackets. We've done Kendrick, Drake, Kanye, bunch of them. Check out the other videos too, if you think we're cute. <laughs> okay, don't. This is actually, I haven't made a decision in my head yet. Usually I, I do pretty easily. Did. You did, huh? I did. You want to let me know what that is? You want me to whisper it to you or do you want me to say it out loud for say, everyone else? Say it out loud. After much due consideration, sure. years and weeks and hours of pouring over the evidence, I've come to the conclusion that my favorite Eminem song is Without Me. This looks like a job for me. That's what I said about the stamp factory that I work at. I said, this looks like the job for me. So everybody just follow me Why on, do you want on Instagram. Oh, okay. I don't think you're right for the role, man. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> don't tell me that right now. Okay. It's going to put me in a terrible headspace. I'm mad. I'm trying to make a decision here. God damn. They, I, I don't know. I really don't. Ah, oh, man, this is tough. Because I almost like scoffed at the idea. I forget which song he says it, but he said like, I'm never going to top what my name is. Yeah. And I kind of scoffed at that. I'm like, I feel like he has made better songs than my name is. But now that I'm looking at these, I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Because that is to me, I feel like, no, I would rather listen to Without Me. I just have to be honest. I'll say like the beat in my name is makes me want to vote for it. It is a better beat, but like his performance in Without Me is what makes it a better song. Like it's just amazingly crafted. All right. Without, we agree. Yeah. <laughs> but that usually doesn't happen. No. <laughs> All right. Without Me wins. <laughs> I would have taken my name is. Yeah. Had it come to me. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Without Me wins the Hive Mind Eminem bracket. What would YouTube look like without us? Leave that down in the comments for him. <laughs> It'd be so empty without us. I feel like it has to still say me. So I'm going to. It'd be so empty. D without me. So like, yeah. What about me? I don't know. It doesn't rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> and rhyming is everything to me. Obviously, it's the only thing I have. What I about up, with the John Wack thing? I grew up in a trailer, man. All I had was rhymes. Okay. To get through all of this. <laughs> Thank um, you, everyone. <laughs> who tuned in. <laughs> all right. Thanks everybody for watching. Again, hit the comments with what song you think should have won and what bracket we should do next. Like the video, get it to fifteen thousand likes, and we'll do the most liked comment. Also, thank you to our sponsor for the video, Fume. Fume. Check the link in description. Go get yourself some Fume. Shout out to Fume for sponsoring the video. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Other than that, subscribe, all that stuff I said at the beginning, and Graydon, come on, leave these people with some advice to leave or live their lives by. The man who chases two rabbits catches neither. I feel like I can catch two. We'll see. <laughs> if they're running close together. If they run different directions, I admit it will be difficult, but I think that I could catch both eventually. <laughs> all right, everybody, this has been Hive Mind TV. We love you, we appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, Am, and Kim, and Haley. Great, can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah. Blow Jay. Yes. Handy. All of that stuff. Hand tornado, <laughs> as you referred to it. A hand tornado on your meat torpedo, I think is what you told me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Creative. I know. <laughs> well, oops. My CD just skipped and everybody just heard you let one rip. <laughs> I'm yeah. a monster when it comes to business. I gobble up that money.